Hello and welcome to the Sheep Seats. I am your host, Matthew, aka Sheep, aka Dark Sheep, and it is Friday night. We are here. We have a guest this evening, Mr. Eric. I don't think anybody's ever called you Mr. Eric before. Probably not. Probably not ever. <laughs> Easy. You might know him as Easy. Uh, you got the right mic now? Yeah. Um, I'm out of practice. So I was looking for the green light on the mic and couldn't find it. So we were rolling, rolling live. So we'll do all, all right, our well. small talk on, on the air. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. How are you doing? Well, I guess first off, where are you, uh, where are you at in your drafts? For the, the I, I got to a hundred real quick and I've been milking it. Um, I've only done a couple these past week or two. So I'm in the like 110 to 120 range right now. Um, I have 111 dingers. So 40 or so left, 39 left. Um, I really wanted, I wish I had backloaded more seeing some of the lobbies. Obviously there's been movers and shakers. And I think largely like, you know, injuries happen. Um, I've probably come out well just randomly, but we're like, you know, bullish on the right people for the most part um but man the late lobbies are fun i think um you know as the contest gets closer to filling you have overlay chasers you know i don't think it'll be overlay anyway yeah um if i could do it over again i would back load more but man it's fun to draft yeah so i i had planned to do like 100 over the course of the thing and now uh we got like three weeks left and i'm at like 55 um a couple of slows finishing up but i'm gonna be out of the country for the next week and a half or so. So I'm going to lose some ground, but uh, yeah. we'll see what happens when I get back. Um, so yeah, I uh, wanted to bring you on tonight before we draft, because um, you've just released some rankings over on your site, easydfs.xyz. Um, and I think, I think you did a very thorough, interesting, a lot of ad, adjectives to describe it the job that you did but um you did a little yeah. bit differently i think than um most people do so i'll just let you talk a little bit about what yeah. your process was and where, how you got there yeah so you know I, i've been doing adjacent like fantasy sports things for ever um as we probably all have but like pretty analytically minded and i've always had um I kind of like hate touts and now I am one in, in a way like, you know, blanket statement. I think, you know, there's, there's good people in all industries for the most part, but um, yeah, I, I like to, you know, stand behind, like I, I'll, I only tout things that I play, things that I put a lot of research in. Like this is stuff that I do organically anyway. Like it, you know, the, I guess I got my start, so to speak in these circles doing a similar sheet for NFL. Um, I had one for baseball last year that I just did privately like pretty late in the game. Um, yeah, it's all analytically based. I, I've always had a problem, um, especially like baseball projections are so good, but then people just have kind of arbitrary rankings. It's like, how do you link? Like projections are so robust. Um, and then you just like sit down. It's like, ah, oh, I like Trey Turner. I don't like Trey Turner. Like you take ADP and you like, just like move this guy up, move this guy down, like, you know, this, like, yeah. I don't know. So I want to like scientize it a little bit, um, you know, do there's some like special touches here and there as far as like age and like range of outcome stuff based on prospect profiles and like some, like a spike score. So like things that I think are very unique to our game, you know, that rewards spikiness in August and September basically. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of put it out there, let people get a taste of it. Um, I think fairly reasonably um, just for, you know, the rankings and like all the sheet and, Similar ish to what, you know, Chris does a lot of really good work, pulling, like scraping, you know, the projection sources and like sorting and ranking, but like, um, yeah, tr like basically everything is formula based too. So there's like, there's some stuff that I do in there, um, for player profiles, for example, like a Wyatt Langford, like his projection won't have him that great unless you sprinkle in his prospect pedigree. Um, but that's all in there. Everything is formula based. So like if, ATC updates projections for a guy if having hot spring. I don't think they really do that, but no. um, if they were to, um, it gets updated. Nova Marte is out for half the season. Um, 
you know, right. You roll that through. So he goes down, other guys get boost. So I just wanted to like have everything kind of out there in the open is what I use. So yeah, just threw my hat in the ring. Yeah. I think the, the, the most interesting part to me about what you did was how you sort of took a look at prospect profiles and like actual like prospect grades. And I don't know that you like back tested to similar players or whatever, but you at least factored that in where I think a lot of times when the conversations come to prospects, people uh, see upside and they just sort of estimate it. They're not like basing it yeah. off other than their opinions. Yeah. I've tried to look at like, you know, only the past couple of seasons. Um, I tried to look at, I would say like historical outliers, but that's like what I think really matters in this game. Like, I think you could definitely meet in your way to advancing above expected and just kind of run pure in the playoffs, hopefully. But um, I'm tactically looking for guys that I think could be outliers. You know, we've, we've kind of had this conversation about how good we think we are or not at finding those people. I think you probably don't give yourself enough credit, just like being plugged in and like yeah. knowing how young people are. And like, if they were a top prospect, it's like, you know, the, the uh, decision matrix is like, like the flow chart is pretty clean there but like you look at you know like someone like Derek Hardy who's a lot sharper and than I am um in this regard you know there's like for every Corbin Carroll there's three Jared Kellenics um yeah. they're still drafting Jared Kellenic but <laughs> like can you afford a 70 percent fail rate when the hit like is a, is a super mega hit right if you're getting a guy in round six that goes in round one the next year does that make up for like this is a game it's probably a false parallel but it's like this is a game where you make the hall of fame and you fail 70 percent of the time like if 300 batting average is like a hall of fame path and it's like why don't we try and strive for the same um in our games a 30 percent advance rate would be insane yeah um so i don't know um it, and it's also fun right but yeah just looking at historical outliers guys like um corbin carroll acuna etc like we're top 10 prospects and like um they fail a lot, but when they hit, they hit. Yeah. So Dave, even before we started here, kind of, uh, we talked a little bit about this already, but, uh, yeah. Do you, do you think anything, does any factor go into it about where you think they will be drafted ne next year, uh, based on success or I that's, mean, that's like, yeah. um, quantifiably no, but that is like sort of in my dis decision tree when talking about like someone like, you know, like the round four infielders, like the Altuve is going to be Altuve no matter what. Ellie Del Cruz next year is either going to be a lot more expensive or a lot less expensive. Um, that's sort of factored in, I would say, in, in spike score and, you know, the age and prospect profile. So you're just by taking those things into account, if those things go right, that player will be more expensive the next year. Um, whereas a guy, you know, like George Springer, um, I would be shocked if he's more expensive next year. It doesn't mean he's a bad pick just because of that fact, but you definitely want to be trying to be overexposed to guys that are going to be more expensive, you know, in the next contest. Yeah. And, you know, I, th I think this year I've taken a different approach personally, just to some, some of the, the outliers and just seeing, just seeing, uh, especially last year or, and, and the, the nice graph that Billy made on Corbin Carroll's advance rate, um, like, uh, just how it, like even chasing him up the board was valuable in your advance rate. So like yeah. if, if, if we're making all these bets on, you know, the top, top prospects, getting some of all of them and just maybe you saying that a third of those lineups or two thirds of those lineups are dead. If that's your estimation is, is maybe the way to go, but yeah, I mean, I don't even think like, if you look at the winning teams, and like this is definitely like something that we falsely do in in this game. Is like you look yeah. at you know there's tens of thousands of teams, and you look at the two, the one maybe two at the top of the contest, and you're like, this is what we do next year. Um, but you know you look at the top team, and it has like multiple players that just like contributed nothing, including pretty high draft picks. Like I remember like Tyler Glass now was like, I don't know, was he like a fourth round pick or something last year? Yeah. Got hurt and like didn't contribute much. He was on the winning lineup. Aaron Ashby. So like the the winning team is going to be so 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 far off of optimal um and which is fine because you only start 10 players a week and you draft 20. um 
it's really hard to get more than say 16 live players through, yeah. you know, the summer. Um, and then you're just kind of rotating. So like, even if your guys fit, like you can win with a, a very early failure and like, none of the, I don't know, none of these guys are that expensive, um, prohibitively expensive. Like if you, if you lose in round one or two, like it sucks, but like around six is very, very replaceable. Yeah. Uh, another question here uh, from Rally. Um, you kind of talked about, you know, how the projections don't adjust to spring okay. training. Um, so, I mean, the, the smart thing is to do is to not do that. Uh, I think personally, uh, you know, the the thing, the indicators you're looking for are the like pitchers velocity types information that like if it's better than last year, if it's worse than last year. I think that is signal. Um, obviously like, uh, Chris sale is throwing fast, faster than last year. And, but you know, he still has a chance to go down as the season goes on, just based on who he is historically too, just, and how his body holds up. But yeah. it is important to, to feel confident, you know, that maybe he's, or he's not starting out at the bottom. Um, yeah. If I had to like pay attention, like I, all I know from spring training is like what gets posted in discord and like Twitter or clips of like yeah. highlights and like half of those are filmed on like, you know, the iPhone six or something and like shame on the MLB for like not trying sure. to out their stuff a little, a little better. Like white Langford hit for like I use spring training to like flex got like flex my priors if they're good and ignore it. <laughs> if it's not like, I think if you had to take something out of it, like the pitcher velocity probably makes sense, but like, Hitters, man, like, I don't know, the quality of the pitchers and, you know, guys are trying out new pitches. Guys are, like, seeing how their, like, their pitch cadence, like, from pitch to pitch. Like, they're mixing, they're working different pitch mixes. Um, I would, if you could, like, ignore pretty much all of it. Like, maybe it helps with, like, so getting, like, a guy like Langford, like, hey, like, half that lineup is banged up, so he's likely to make the team. I think it matters for making the team. But yeah. like, I don't think having a 1000 OPS has any correlation to the major league performance. It just might help you make their opening day roster. I think that's all that matters. Yeah. And for example, somebody that who is like really struggling so far in spring is Kyle Schwarber, but nobody's dropping him down because they don't even know that he has not like one hit in all of his at bats because it, yeah. you know, it's Kyle Schwarber and that that's like, he could start off the first month with two hits and then still be the guy you need later. But for sure. Yeah. And then there's like Eloy Jimenez. I know you are uh, taking the bait again, like in that, and, and it's fun, but like probably best served ignoring it. Like, but yeah. Yeah. Kevin hit Newman hit 700 once in spring training. Nice. All right. So we are going to get into a dinger here. Uh, we are six. We share to try and get one in, too. Uh, we, yeah. Oops. Are you good? <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. Yeah. So we'll see if we're in different rooms. Oh. Shit. Uh, I got to refresh. Good old location bug. That's fine. We'll get a clean room in the next one. I'll, I'll multi seat here. All right. A true. Yeah. All right. We need six people for the next one. Sorry about that. <clears throat> <laughs> so, should we draft Votto? Uh, no, I do not think we should be drafting Joey Votto. Uh, no. If you get if you get signed to a team after Daniel Vogelbach, then you, there's not a, there's not a great outlook. There's there's still some free agents that I'm uh, still hitting draft on. Um, yeah, this this morning in Discord, uh, uh, J- JD Martinez was the the man of discussion because. Uh, uh, friend best ball viper is like 78 76 percent owned i guess on him um I, I will say that he is uh like one of my top three outfielders at like 20 percent right now so that's a lot um he just seems like a guy that can the, the cost never has the cost seemed right for me yeah no I'm, I'm with you there like he's a super elite hitter if it in and the cost is 
negligible. It's like, I don't know, 3% of your total draft capital. Like if it's a zero, it's a zero. Right. Yeah. So Nez is here. He got pick one. Grill Belichick's here. We get you got in there at six. FF Child is eight. Chips in at ten. And we got Brian W here says he's in the nine hole. BJW. So this is going to be a outfield heavy draft. Oh, we're not. What's that? Is or that not. This is me. <laughs> we're not that yeah, Bobby heavy. Witt, number four. Uh, All right, Jim, I mean, make my day here. There's a guy I really want and a guy I really don't want. <laughs> nope. No, you did not get Otani. Um, okay. this, this is really weird news today from the Dodgers. This whole... Uh, Buki's going to be the shortstop for now permanently. Or I don't remember the exact wording, but it, yeah. it was very confusing. Um, all right, I'll just take Julio here. Yeah, I mean, the most recent blur, like, you, I, because of how unavailable watching spring training is, it was like Yoshi... Yoshi's like stat line came out and it's like, oh, he gave up you know, six hits and three runs or whatever it was. I'm making it up. I don't remember exactly. And yeah. then somebody posted like the six hits and like, you know, one of them's like a comebacker, like four of them are like off of Gavin Lux's glove or Gavin Lux boots it or something. And then, it, and then there's like a quote from, um, yeah, Dave Roberts, like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not, we're not committing to, you know, Gavin Lux playing shortstop. It's like, all right, immediately Mookie bets. You're, Congrats, you're the short, you're the short, and he's not exactly a good shortstop. I mean, he's going to be fine, but I, th- I think Miguel Rojas or er, is going to play enough of that position. That I think, yeah. The more I thought about it, that it it doesn't make sense to me. It's like a stopgap measure. Yeah, I I don't know, like if it means that Lux is going to play second, or like you know Muncie gets some second, and you know Rojas gets third, and you know they have Chris Taylor plays, you know second. Like I think they still have Kike Hernandez, so they just have like a whole glut of guys that they could rotate around there. You're even forgetting my favorite pick of last year, Miguel Vargas. Oh my gosh, is he he still? Does he have a path to the major league still? I mean he. If he could, he could play second. He was gonna. He played second last year. Yeah. I because, I, I, like, Kike Hernandez should not have a job. That's just like lefty ridiculous. smasher, lefty killer. Um. All right. Uh, let's see. We're back to back. Go, so I can't. I can't consult you here. Yeah, I'm gonna go Jose here. Um. He's a guy that has been low on, on my priorities in this group, and so I'm just get, getting a few lineups with him in at this point. Yeah. It's like Nez got lucky. He got the 1-1 one, one and the one twelve in both rooms. I have, like, the 108 and 106 in both. I almost took Schwarber in both, but, yeah, I'll take Schwarber here. I, I was, like, dogging Schwarber a bit early in the draft season. Um, yeah, but that was more at, like, this position over here. Yeah, and like even as you try and like you you know you rework things and like you take ADP into account, like I think it's like fine. Like it's very flat after Kyle Tucker. You could even try to argue Kyle Tucker is pretty much in that Freeman Olsen tier and wit for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do you think Schwarber's a step below? Um, but yeah, getting Schwarber here where he's no longer competing with Kyle Tucker in Jordan. Um, and now he's, you know, competing with Devers and Adoles, you know, is much better. Yeah. And sometimes here, I don't mind going down to some of these guys that are taken over on this side of the board. Like you said, it's a pretty flat tier. And yeah. um, I think ADP at this point, people just take it in the order of ADP for the most part, um, especially at the infielders. Yeah. I want to write up tiers um i kind of formula based some tiers so i, I want to publish that um but yeah like i think round one has you know 
run one has flattened out, you know, as Acuna is hurt, if you believe that, as Aaron Judge is hurt, if you believe that. Um, so that kind of flattens out the top. And then, you know, the middle, I think everyone besides Kyle Tucker is probably in a tier. And then it's, you know, the heavy hitters in the infield. And then it's flat as until like Nolan Jones, I think. Uh, where where do you got uh, Spencer Strider mixed in there? I, I guess we wait, I, wait till after your pick, but I have him fifteen, um, which means I like never get him, like yeah. ever, which is crazy. Um, I just think he's so te- like the the strategy, if you would call it that, of like, oh, I'll just take um, like I don't have a top outfit, or I'm just gonna like dominate at pitcher. Like that strategy is so mainstream for whatever reason. Like I, I know people did it a lot last year with like Colin Strider. Um, I probably did it more than Colin Burns. Strider, Strider, oh, was, later Burns, yeah, Strider was lower. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that obviously didn't work out. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna take take some Nolan Jones here. My my Nolan Jones has gone down, uh, so I've been wanting to get some more of him back in. Uh, Cause I've been doing a lot of Michael Harris at this point. Um, oh, I, if not stacking, I, I'm all over Nolan Jones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and um, Colorado, I'm kind of surprised I mean, I'm glad they haven't, but I'm kind of surprised they haven't brought another just random vet in. Jerks and Profar. Well, he's on power. Well, right? like, like, yeah, they, like, what they did last year with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like Tommy Pham. Or, I mean, I didn't say it, but uh, like, what if what if JD Martinez goes there? I've said it a million times. That makes like absolutely no sense, but that that would, if that were to happen. He goes to like, I don't know, like 120, <laughs> like maybe yeah. higher. I don't think it, it sounds like he there there's there was a report today. I saw that uh he did have an offer from the Marlins, but it didn't it's not the two years. He wants a two year deal and he seems okay. to be sticking out for that. So Larry Larry's go, going gonna try to do that, dominate the pitching yeah. thing, which like as much as the discussion exists about around where to take your picture, I just, I don't think anybody really thinks this is the right way to do it. No, because you're just not rewarded enough in the format for like, you can dominate on the season, but it's really hard to dominate the week. Like the parlay of like Strider Burns and Gosman all mattering a lot in the playoffs. Um, the other thing is like part of the value of an elite pitcher, if you were to believe in that, is that there's fewer of them than, you know, elite hitters. So like when you take Strider, part of your Strider bet, and I know you're about to pick, and then I guess I'm about to pick, but part of your Strider pick is like saying he's so good, he just runs away at pitcher. And then you've, you're have you like devaluing that by elevating other pitchers. So it's a little like you're going against your bet in a way. All right. So yeah, I was thinking outfielder here, but I think I am going to grab one of these pitchers. Um, and uh, I have by far more yeah, Zach Wheeler. So yeah, I'm between Wheeler and Yoshi. I get like none of either, um, but this okay. is a good pocket for either one of them. Um, I'll go, I'll go Wheeler. Yeah. And, as skins over bird says here, you know, if Strider gets a double start in the finals might be the best player in round one or round two. I mean, he could, he could smash even the full season, but I guess, guess more to the point here is um, like the, the, the points that you're giving up at infield and outfield by taking more pitchers right after him, just like messes with your, your, your chance of even getting there to the playoffs to even have that a possibility. Yeah, like the parlay, like Strider himself having like the two start week, like I get that. But if he does, like the parlay of then you getting enough points 
from your hitters while carrying Burns and Gosman, I think is really tough. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, you did say you don't have much Yoshi, uh, but you were thinking about it there. Um, yeah. You know, the, the talking point is obviously how much is he going to pitch, but um, I don't know. The You know, you were talking about that spring training start, that he, the last one that he had. Yeah. And then if if you were not following the right people and you saw the pitching ninja t- tweet, it was like one awesome strikeout talking about, and the caption was, uh, MLB hitters aren't ready for y- Yamamoto. And like, <laughs> it's like just whatever portion of that outing yeah. you wanted to take is what you for sure sell. For sure. Um, he's like, but he's one of those guys where, if you just purely follow projections and I'm talking like maybe I'm talking against what I'm saying, but like if you purely follow projections, like you'll have 0% y'all moto and I don't think that's right. So you have to take into account range of outcomes there. Um, yeah, there's some concern with innings, but like he's a guy where the error bar, um, is the, is so wide. Like all the guys around him have, you know, three plus years at least of elite MLB performance and Yamamoto has not pitched in the MLB at all. So like he could be much better and much or much worse, I think um, potentially than what his, you know, average projection is um, likely not the case for like Fran Bravalda is like, he's just gonna, you know, have his low mid threes, like pitch a bunch of innings, strike out a guy in inning. Like he's, he's going to be who he's going to be. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think the the Wheeler Lopez Castillo um, has has that upper upward movement more compared to Fran Valdez at this point. Yeah, um, but those guys also have more innings on their arm. Sure. When you're, you know, the 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 the, the saying, you know, the the best predictor of future innings is past innings, and the best. Yep predictor of future injury is past innings so yeah in my current innings yeah (laughs) yeah um okay i have so many stack options i can stack my pitchers here go nola wheeler um and really piss not piss i probably make chips day then i have castellanos to go with schwarber or t oscar with mookie i get like no t oscar um I'll go. Right. I'll go to you. Oh, Castellanos got to the top. Oh, all right. Uh, I'll take this fall on George Springer. I don't. Yeah. I'm not quite as down on him as as everyone, but um, I don't take a ton of him. But I'll definitely take him here. I didn't have a, a stack option really in sight, and I didn't want another pitcher. Yep. I, I think like oh, I mean at 55, it's great. Like I think he's neutral ish at ADP. He's just like unexciting, like great in a stack, mediocre ish otherwise, but like, it's fine. Like it fits the need. Nez is getting tattled on here. Uh, he took oh Wyatt at 61. Um, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely gotten to the point where I haven't been grabbing Wyatt as I, as comfortably as I was before probably need to force myself a little bit more into it um, i was joking but maybe not for long like <laughs> i was joking that he's gonna flip evan carter by the end of by oh by yeah the, time the contest starts um i think he's gonna get close but i think Car- carter's like gonna hold serve in the mid 60s i think langford's getting into the 70s um you know pretty soon <laughs> uh no we're, we're not gonna get it we're not going to get any political, Numi. I mean, we, we might talk we, about that haircut, though. I don't know. I'm I didn't sure. recognize him. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't see him on on the on the shows as much, and I, you know, it's caught by surprise. Yeah, <clears throat> we are getting, you know, as tends to happen in these drafts now, uh, stream drafts. The the pitchers are kind of building up at top. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. I don't know. 
obviously I'm signaling what I'm going to try to do here, but uh, we'll see if anybody else takes Catel Marte, probably, but uh, at least try and set it up here. Yeah. I was eyeing Christian Walker because now infield has actually shockingly kind of dried up here. Yeah. And most of the times I'm re reaching there for a, a cruise if I'm looking for infielder um, just because it's more exciting. Sure. Um, and there, there's some, there's still some amount of uh, sticker shock for me on Walker and Marte this year compared to last year where they were going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am in the exact opposite camp here, PD. Uh, I, I'm not taking Ailey Rushman in this range. Um, and it just just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I think I think there's still two. I think the catcher penalty on him is still high enough, and just based on how that team's structured, is like they have so many guys that they're gonna want to get into the DH spot too. Like, I think it just makes sense that they don't treat him quite the same as they did last year. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he did play 154 last year, which is insane. Right. Um, that's unlikely to happen again, but like he could still lead the league in games played like for a primary catcher. Um, yeah. Plus DH, but yeah, it's gotten a little more crowded. It Again, Adley's a guy. He's super good. Like I, I have a ticket on him to win MVP. Um, I just don't know that you're going to get the payoff, um, in this format unless he takes a major step up in power. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm taking Gunner and then I'm doing a Santander and, you know, building on later. Not, yeah. I'm sort of skipping Adley as part of that group. Yeah. Adley is like stack only for me. Um, I guess unless he falls, but like in a stack, I think he's perfectly fine. Like in this range, like again, like this range is pretty flat. Like I, of course, like I, I'm, I'm probably too concentrated, but that's just kind of what I'm choosing to do. Uh, yeah. Partially out of laziness and, you know, partially of like, I, I want to just like trust my, my guys and my research and whatever. But um, yeah, he definitely falls in the category of like in a stack, you know, he goes up. This helps too, I guess. Blake Snell or Grace, and these are two guys I really like. But I do have Snell ahead. I'll stick to it. Yeah, I think you can get. It's kind of crazy the price you can get on Snell still. Uh, so it, we did we did get Catel Marte. So that's a good little combo there. Um, obviously, I still always worry about Catel Marte's hamstrings and how. They just they don't like to uh, stay healthy very often. He did mostly last year, but you know the, the history is still there. That that's also part of the problem I have getting this combo. Um, just that that part of it is a little bit sketchy to me. Just uh, just the history of his body holding up through yeah. the last seasons. Yeah, I mean, you don't need a full season from your seventh round pick, though. True. Like you. Like, you're, we're sitting in this draft, and you feel like you really do. But then come June or August or whenever, it's like... I mean, as soon as I'm done drafting, I'll probably not care anymore. <laughs> yeah. But point being, it's like someone will get injured on every single roster that you have. Um, it could be the obvious injury, guys. It could not be. Um, so... I don't know. You don't need it. Like I, he plays really well in stacks. Um, not like a, a super target otherwise, but I'm a sucker for, and this is like a hole in my game um, in the DFS streets. I'm a sucker for switch hitters. You always have the platoon advantage, no matter what you're on, like to get pulled. Um, so, so yeah, in that, yeah. in that regard, I've always um, kind of like Marte and he, and he like crushes lefties. Um, at least he used to, I don't know if he's, if that still holds up, maybe not Ozzy Albee's level, but, that's at least my, my memory of him. All right. So I do have Stephen Kwan here. If I want to put him with Jose Ramirez, uh, I don't. Uh, I'm actually looking at 
taking my second picture here. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm probably going to get hurt, burned by it, but I'm just, I'm just all aboard Zach Eflin. Like, I mean, uh, again, meaning outcomes here, but like, if you look at the bat, um, pitching stuff, he's like top five in terms of points. That That's very high. That is very high. I, I have Eflin is a guy that I'll, I'll get there. Eflin is a guy that I have ranked a hundred. His ADP is 97. And I think I might have 0%. It's just like someone is always falling or someone I always like more. Um, so that's definitely like a, a blind spot of mine is, is Eflin. Um, the longest I've waited to take a picture, I've started zero four five, um, multiple times kind of as a bit yeah like like politics like 45 bit but um and then like hammer like 10 or 11 pitchers after just for fun um it's only 10 bucks as you know the as the joke goes <laughs> yeah and you say that and like I, 50 times you know 150 drafts but. <laughs> it's only 50 bucks then i think that's how that math works yeah um but no and like part of having fun you know, this is built, it, not even just calling it a bit, but just wanting to build a different team and like have it there. Like, is it, is it a bad decision if you're like trying to grind out every edge? I don't, maybe it is like going that far off, but you get that team, you get to see like, you, if it fails, you'll probably forget about it. Like, I don't know who's going back yeah. and looking at those, um, but yeah. But I, I mean, like, I, I think Billy's, like, the, the zero pitcher through five thing, like, as a rule, is, like, decent to very good. Um, round four and five often has tempting, has, like, temptations for me. Um, I don't really take many of the round two or three ones. Um, but come round, you know. Yeah. Uh, this, this group right here. Yeah. It's hard to choose one, but, like, I those, those hitters there, I don't think they're very great either. So like I'm, I'm often taking falling on one of those um, Pablo Lopez and Castillo specifically. Um, yeah, it's sort of, sort of like a modified anchor pitcher, if you will. Yeah. Uh, after our picks here, I do, do want to ask you something about how you were handling pitchers in your uh in your ranking or in your, in your projections and rankings. Sure. And stuff. Jobber Jim is taking their clock. It's making me sweat. And I really, there's so many outfielders at the top. I like feels weird. Yeah. Cedric Mullins is as, as much as I was against him, like he's I mean, falling. He's He's at you the know. top of my 102. Um, I'm going to go. Is that Lau or Low? Because I have a Tampa guy. Uh, that is Lau. Low. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I will take Cedric Mullins. Uh, like, I, I, the, compared to these other outfielders, like, I think, I think it, it's right if you're taking an outfielder here. Like, I think you, yeah. you, know, you know, if because you, you got to compare them against costs, like if you're going to take an outfielder for sure. So we got we got a Jazz Chisholm uh, MVP. Like he's not going to McDonald's anymore or <laughs> not every day. <laughs> he's on the Ocho Cinco McDonald's every day or crutches um, in our Discord or Hoops Discord. <laughs> McDonald's but, every day. Um. No, what I wanted to ask you about pitching, I know uh, when you when you for hitters at least you did some personal opinions about like uh, at bats plate appearances yes. and stuff, and you did some pushing up and down. Did you look at that at all for pitchers? I did, so, I did, yeah. Um, like I, I'm like four picks away in two rooms, so I won't do it right now. But I could like tell you, I could filter it and find. I did like manual adjustments for 46 pitchers. Um, you could tell me that I'm probably wrong. 
because people that, you know, get paid to do this more than I do. Um, <laughs> I'm overriding their projections, but um, just guys where I'm, you know, I think we're on the low side or I'm just, I'm trying to project, like I care less about averages than I do, let's say like a, even a 70th percentile. It's like a guy like Paul Skeens um, stands out. A guy like uh, Scooball stands out. Um, a guy like Yoshi stands out. So um, for the most part, I'm trying when I do trying to project um, the higher end just to see like if things go well, where could this guy go? Uh, yeah, so I will just just for the bit, I will take Eloy on this one. Um, I do think his cost is fine if he is actually going to stay healthy. Um, and like making this bet, I, I don't need him to with this group that I have ahead of him. Um, I was looking at a pitch, a couple of pitchers here too. So. Yeah, pitcher is nice here. What has happened to infield? Like, am I going to take Nico Horner as my second infielder? I'm, I mean, I'm not, but like, what the heck? Like, is Xander Bogarts any better? Gross. I don't know. This I will agree with you here, Nez. Uh, Alec Bohm should not be a better shot at MVP than that. No, but that doesn't make um, that doesn't make whoever he's showing a good bet. This is like just because that they're both they could both be bad. It's less bad. <laughs> Alec Bohm could be a, a million to one. Alec Bohm's ever going to win an MVP. And what, I'll go what is never going to win a VP of the Phillies? So like, what is the actual percentage difference between 12,000 and 14,000? Like half a percent? I don't know. Not I'm, even, I'm, yeah. Um, I don't have that stuff memorized. No, but I mean, it's zero, right? Like, Al Boom is, I don't know, like the fifth best Philly. Like, maybe, probably not even. Um, but again, like, that type of stuff doesn't matter because you have like name value and recognition and, and like because you can't bet no. Like the correct odds for like Alcbom will not win MVP is like fifty thousand to one. Yeah. I don't know. Min or mi minus fifty thousand. So like the the spread. I don't know. We're doing yeah. uh it's hypothetical just, sports bet talk. It's just something people want. You know, they would like that long shot, like it doesn't really matter what the number is if it's if it's at that point. Yeah. People aren't price sensitive. Like 110, 120, 150. Like for like, you know, if I'm from South Philly and I want to bet on Alcom, betting on Alcom, you know, on the sports book that I have the twenty dollars on. Right. My account. Real took all the infielders. It does have six of them. None that I like, but I don't know, I like to run <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get any pitcher back, but um, I was I was looking just thinking ahead to my stacks also, um, and finishing some of them. That there wasn't really outfielders <clears throat> that I'm planning on taking. Not a ton of them. There's a, I have a bunch of infield options that I like with these teams that I've got. So that was kind of where I went to the the outfield selection there. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten like a bunch of outfielders that I don't like, but the investment is high enough. Um, so like, it could be good. I just don't personally like them. Um, so if this team does well, um, I probably had a bad year. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of, you know, is what it is. Oh, my goodness. Like, am I taking... I'm not taking Carlos Rodon. I mean, 126. <laughs> I'm I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. So I have, I have Shane Bieber ranked ahead of him. Where am I gonna go? No, let's keep passing on pitcher. I, I have I have to field an infield. All right. Well, you, you I was gonna take either of those guys that you left me. Again, yeah. Um. I mean, I. I'm going to take Shane Bieber. I mean, uh, he, and here is a guy that, you know, the spring is being good to. Uh, he does have that velocity bump into the range where it matters, into that 30, or not 30, the 93, 94 range. You know, it's, once you get below Very that, it, it becomes problematic. Um, especially, especially because he, 
I don't know if you would say like poster boy, but like it, like at least has documented his, you know, fall was velocity based and maybe some of that was injuries or a lot of it might have been injuries, but yeah, that's a narrative that you could definitely sell yourself on. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when it comes to like now, as we get like the, the popularity of these off season programs growing, like outside the teams, like at a certain point, how much, you know, how much of that is noise and like, Sure. Obviously, how much of the stuff are, you know isn't announced that we don't know, but we know that he did go to driveline, and we did see we have seen results in spring, um, yeah, from it. So th that putting those two together have got me back in on Shane Bieber this year. Yeah, for me, I would say mostly no news is good news is my like spring motto, but I would make an exception for. Um, velocity for sure especially guys that like are on on that border because 91 is a lot it doesn't sound like much but like 90 91 is a lot different than 93 um oh too bad uh dang number nine takes it who's in here all right we are back on the clock all right this is I don't know. These pictures are kind of, I mean, they're not exactly the same, but like I can get just as excited for Jose Barrios and Michael King. Yeah. I think you're probably, are you higher on Michael King? Um, versus Barrios? I don't think so. But it, okay. this is all a big tier of like un, unexcitingness for the right. most part. Like I think Tanner. BB, who I'm taking, like, you know, he's young. He's the youngest of the bunch, so he has some upside and strikes guys out. Michael yeah. King, like, could slash should be the best pitcher of the bunch, but not in a way that's necessarily rewarded in the format. Right. right? Like, if you're playing, like, a Roto League, he's probably more valuable. And, you know, there's the injury, or not the injury, but the innings question mark for a converted, you know, reliever. But, man, he was dominant for, uh, for the Yankees. And even when he came over to the Padres and even starting, you know, it was pretty good. So like you kind of like the premium Seth Lugo, if you will. Uh, yeah. Kind of making that transition. But I mean, he's much, he's a much better pitcher than yeah. Seth Lugo. Um, but um, I mean, he's also got good pitching environment. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, this sort of leads, you know, I was going to say something about wins and quality starts, but at this point, I'll I'll admit that I just I don't care I don't think about wins and quality starts at all like for any any pitcher at any point because like just looking at the you know what is important like what is the most important things for the whole season to scoring it's it's not wins and quality starts no like there it's like such a minuscule part of the score and it's so un both of them are just unpredictable that like at this point in my drafting i've just stopped caring about them at all i know some people still want to say oh i use it as a tiebreaker and stuff but i i don't even do that anymore i don't i don't know how you would really like reliably like i i think we vastly overrate the predictability of those things like what are we like we're leaning on you know um our predetermined thoughts on like how good a team is, but it's also, it's like, not just like the team, like if you have a good offense behind you, like that helps you with your wins, but you still have to go five innings um, and leave the game with your team having scored more. So I don't know, maybe like saying that out loud, it's like, no duh, but <laughs> like, um, I don't know. It, it's like, it's also like in the playoff, like in the playoffs, it's a binary outcome. You're either going to get a win or not in a week, or if you pitch twice, like innings, you're like you're not going to get the win unless you get the innings. Like to me, innings is number one always. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, and, and if you're targeting innings that should lead to quality starts, like yeah. that small amount of time, um, taking Andres Jimenez there 
to go with Jose. Um, but this is an interesting question because part of it, uh, you know, how much would wins and quality starts need to be worth for you to care about them? Part of it is that uh, it it is pretty evenly distributed among pitchers. Like if, yeah. if you look at, at least in terms of projecting these things, like through the whole course of the season, like uh, there's, it's hard to find a pitcher that really stands out predictably enough to even, even if it was 50 points. Like, yeah, because me, oh, yeah, from, from like a prediction or projections, it's like, I don't think anyone's projected for more than 15. Like granted someone will likely win 17 or 18 games, but like you're talking Spencer Strider's projected for 15 and Charlie Morton is projected for 10. You know, and they, you know, they pitch for the same yeah. team, but like five wins over, you know, 20 some odd weeks. You know, it's a quarter of a win a week that we're talking about. Like, how many points can that possibly be worth to like exactly. swing a decision? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, that, and that's not me saying that I like Charlie Morton um, <laughs> necessarily. I know Charlie's 40 ish or whatever he is but it's just yeah it's it just the wins per week difference is like not much but you can say that for all pitching stats and that's why a pitcher i think is a lot flatter when you're talking about like a back weighted playoff um format yeah i do t i do take a little bit of charlie morton i don't um i don't know i don't feel excited about it but i've always been a Debbie Downer on Charlie Morton goes back to uh, when I was I was ready to call it quits on him when he went to the Braves, but like I just I just didn't think uh, that at his age he would keep it up, but I was wrong on that. Um, this this is definitely a weird room. Like these these outfielders yeah. are hanging here. Um, Uh, so I'm going to take my sixth outfielder here. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously not at the top, but um, I don't know. Taking Giancarlo Stanton this late still feels as I'm good. Building, as I'm building a Yankee stack out. And, yeah. I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, you did have <clears throat> T Torres and Volpe. Um, just kind of backdooring my way into like something that I could logically defend um, when this is done. Yeah. And this is where my, my thought started was once because um, basically the, the graphic that Billy had made for me um, or he had made the pitcher one and I asked him to do it for hitters as like uh, the pr taking the projection for the season and mm -hmm. dividing it per start and just showing that graphically that little chunk that was wins and quality starts was just like the same for all the guys. So like, like we said, over the distribution of the whole season, like nobody really stands out. Yeah. And it's true. The, I, but for me, the, the other thing, the more I, I do this, the, the less I like have any concept of why or how to predict, two start weeks and and just like just so many elements go into who's going to be healthy get the two like there's like what is the what is the actual increase i don't know i'm sure i've tried okay. data like pitching data is so um cumbersome to pull um mainly because fan graphs doesn't recognize quality starts right um and barely recognizes wins. So like any pitcher game log export does not count win or quality start. <laughs> you can kind of back into, you can back into quality start based on innings and runs allowed. Yeah. Right. Like quality started, you know, six or more innings and three or fewer runs. Um, but wins, you don't know. Right. Like, cause all it'll say is like, how, like it doesn't tell you what the score was when they left the game. So you, like I've had a hard time pulling, you know, pitcher, game logs but i tried looking at like innings and stuff and like the the best that i've got 
is like a like the pitchers that pitch the most obviously have the best chance at two start weeks <laughs> right but um like a team is only going to have one maybe two two star pitchers in a week and they kind of stack um week after week so i'll try and finish that thought and not ruin this team uh um, we do see a round 15 ces after the Noelvi marte news today i'm not even sure that that's super bad honestly um no oh no i just yeah calling it out there he's aggressive right um but he's got a lot of power but yeah but like i i like to stack pitchers in it's like condomy but also i think is a really good way to increase your chances like oh one of these guys will get a two-start week but also possibly both of these guys will get a two-start week um, which is really nice yeah sure um I'm I'm going down the board here and I'm I'm pulling Bryce Miller up. Um this this group here just like leaves me dry. <laughs> yeah, especially like Bradish is well, he might be okay, but like I'm not gonna click him. Um no. Giolito, same thing. Like I guess he's probably looking even worse. It's so, like dropping like flies in, in that range. Yeah, and and like I take Bueller when he falls because like he's gonna miss a month of the season, and like we kind of it it's not because uh, he's hurt actively hurt, unlike those other guys. Yeah, like what? what? Yeah, it's, it's not exciting. Yeah, he's like his strikeout stuff has really fallen off. Since it, since his like initial debut, yeah, and, and part of his magic was that um, that Dodgers shift in defense um, stuff. So like, like, yeah, he's I, almost he's almost like just like look like um, fan graphing it like almost like Shane Bieber. Whereas, like, you know, 10K per nine, like, low three ZRA, and, you know, he starts missing time, and then he starts striking fewer people out. It's like, we're not excited. Um, but, yeah, I don't know that you're getting enough innings there. You, you buy it on a dip when, it, when you can. Yeah. So uh, I'm grabbing Ezekiel Tovar here. I have not been too positive. And here's something from spring. I've not been too positive on – uh, his outlook based on spring, but that's because of where he's. It seems like they're still planning on like leading off with Charlie Mort or Charlie uh, Blackman, and like like it. You know, it seems like uh, Tovar isn't hasn't been a priority in the lineup. Um, I would I would have much been much happier like the amount of Ezekiel Tovar I've been taking, um, if he had been batting higher up. But um, yeah. That, that, that would stink. Like one versus eight is probably close to a full eight at bat per game or play appearance, I should say. Maybe it's like yeah. point seven or something, but that's pretty meaningful over a week and then obviously over a season. Yeah, and so expert did take Ryan McMahon. It, maybe I should be taking Ryan McMahon over Tovar, um, but I, I guess here again uh, I'm going just based off of uh, – uh, we we know who Ryan McMahon is, and there's still that yeah. that question mark on Tovar. Um, sure, and he can steal some bags and run into a little more power for sure. Yes, we do not have best ball viper in here, so so I get him. So you get him there. Yeah, the price the price is right on that. Even even if he goes to a crowded lineup, like. I just if he went, job. I don't care where it is. Right. And the thing is, if he went to an uncrowded lineup, like that there's a high probability chance that he's gonna miss a month to for some injury, even if, if it's sure. if there's a, available at bats. But I don't know why he doesn't find a job, so seems pretty there's, safe. Yeah, and like it's obviously not the primary thing that i'm looking for but like if he doesn't find a job and the season starts and 
you know, someone gets hurt, like JD Martinez. JD Martinez is just gonna like walk in and hit. Like I maybe maybe this you, like you can clip this and it'll look bad, but like JD Martinez, whenever he shows up, wherever he shows up, like I have pretty high confidence he's gonna hit. Um, so it's just a matter of finding that job. Yeah. So I take uh, just no unstacked Andrew Vaughn there. Uh, I got Eli, don't you? What's that? You have oh, Eli. yeah, I did have Eli. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, when you picked Eli, I was like, Andrew Vaughn. Where you, you can take an Andrew Vaughn 20 minutes later. Um, have, muscle are you, memory there. Uh, are you digging deep into the, like, the Yohan Moncada range for that team? No. Um, I, I hate to keep like shilling, but like I, I wrote up like the deep stack partners of like the undrafted guys, which I think is really interesting to think about. Um, Mankata did not crack the list. Um, you just got to throw 2019 ball out the window for him. And then he just looks like really, really bad. Um, I do like Andrew Vaughn, but yeah, the White Sox are like one of three or four, maybe even five teams that I was just like, eh, I don't think there's anything there besides the drafted guys. Yeah. Um, Tommy Pham. Um, He's a tricky one because um, we've seen him take a crowded job. Like when he went to the Mets, like he wants to win. Uh, mm. So I think he's just looking for a winning team at this point. Um, but like, I do think he, he does get a job. I don't know why he won. And he doesn't seem like a guy to retire. No, like he was still fine last year. I just don't think there's any. Like, what is the 90th percentile there? Like, what do you win when you win with Tommy I mean, Pham is not doing you're, much for me. You're pretty much trying to run it back where you get the a playoff week hot streak like he did last year on, on the Diamondbacks. I don't think he's a consistent contributor at all. Yeah. They're, like, I think that the risk is just too high um of him not finding a job or like the job that he finds is like a bad one yeah yeah i think um, the timey fans kind of grow on trees in the, in the draft all right so i'm gonna take taj bradley and then be at six pitchers uh six infielders six outfielders um i do have a couple of this might be six seven seven i think tonight because there's another outfielder that I kind of want to add to this team. And I'm, I don't know. I'm much more likely to do 677 than 767. I don't know if that's right or why I do that, but I've I've done I've done more 677s seven lately. Um for better or worse. I feel like we're obviously like more pitcher injuries will come, but like as each day or week goes by and like the pitchers, like right now, I mean, I did just click Kyle Bradish's name, but yeah. like right now you're, you're for the most part clicking the guys that are healthy for now. So like what was a seven pitcher team three weeks ago, you, this is like a weird way to think about it, but like, in February, you draft a seven pitcher team. You probably expect that to be like a six point five or six point seven or something pitcher team mm -hmm. by March, and then that team becomes a six point three or six point five pitcher team by the end by the beginning of the season. Um, so, like, you now you've versus the teams that drafted like in the beginning of the season, you've gained a quarter to a half a pitcher, let's say, um, by not taking Bradish and whoever else has, has fallen off. Sure. Um, so like, as you get later into the season, like you could argue like that the fewer pitcher teams are a little better, at least than they were okay. a month ago. Um, but if you have a seven pitcher team that remained a seven pitcher team, then you're obviously in really good shape. Um, if you drafted that a month ago. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm just out on Bradish. Um, I like the, I don't think the odds are good enough. Yeah, What's that? Right. He's throwing. Yeah, sure. From 140, I like. It's twice as far as he needs to throw. It's easy. 
you you played a lot more baseball than I did. You didn't quit in middle school like I did. So maybe you just, can answer just, this. Just past that. Just past that? Okay. okay. I, I quit I quit after a year and a half in high school. Okay. So maybe not. But it always I'm always laughing at like this distance. Like they always tell you how far they were throwing. Like what what is the point of you know, do they do they measure out 140 feet? Like you gotta probably. stand here. I think for the injury guys, like they probably do. <laughs> but I, I was like joking about this with like with John like growing up, um, being like very not serious about baseball. Um and just like when I, when I, we were warming up, we were just like me and whoever my partner was, like we were just like, all right, get to long toss like as soon as possible. So anyway, obviously that's how you knew how you knew I was like very not good. But yeah, I think Nez is saying like, there, yeah, there's there's benchmarks and there's like in in the in the rehab process. Um, but it's like, how hard is he throwing from 140? I don't know. But I I, I might have had literally zero. So now, like this this team is just the um, the antithesis of everything that I've done for the, the last month and a half. Yeah. So. Nez, you might, might have a little more information. There are some pretty rigid, rigid rehab benchmarks for throwing distances. I just find it funny that there's like this number, like 140 feet and like not 139, not 141. You, but the, this is the next place you have to throw from. Um, so I, I did something silly here. Rather than take uh, Polanco or Ty France with Julio Rodriguez, I took Cal Raleigh. Um, I'm actually pretty far out on this offense as a whole, other than Julio. What's that? I said rightfully so. I think like bad ballpark, probably bad team. The team has like become like more and more crowded. I don't think they put tune. They're not quite like uh, Minnesota, but there's like the team is just full of C plus guys all throughout the lineup. Yeah, um, I'll even so- go Mitch Garver sometimes is. A pair with Julio, yeah. But I mean, I like how again, Cal Raleigh's switch hitter. Um, I, I just wrote him up, so I'm, I, I kind of remember like he hit like I think 31 homers last year and 28 the year before, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so real legit power. Um, he just runs into a good week when Julio does. Like I think, like you, you, you should be taking guys like that. And I think Polanco is like perfectly fine, but um, yeah, he I shouldn't I, be a hundred percent to Raleigh's ten percent. Right, he's like ten x more likely to contribute. Yeah, and I should probably not be a hundred percent Cal Raleigh and zero percent Jorge Polanco, but yeah, that's where I'm at. And speaking of silly additions, I don't know in your deep stack for Cleveland if you got to any Ramon Laureano, uh, but he was the guy I was talking about wanting to add as my last outfielder. To go with my little Cleveland. He he hurt me last year. He hurt me <laughs> bad. Um, like really I bad. Understand. I understand. See, now I'm between do I add a low upside spike week stack guy in JT Romuto, or do I add Colt Keith, who I just want to be exposed to this kind of profile? I say Colt Keith in that in that case, but yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I just think. Ramon Laureano is going to be batting fifth all year if he stays healthy. Again, he hasn't exactly been a picture of health, but um, I don't know. That, and that, obviously, that that in that if I'm complaining about the Seattle lineup, I you know putting it's it putting much it together worse. with Cleveland is yeah, not much worse. <laughs> Somehow, Rally entered five dingers. But never got in the stream draft. Oh, yeah, I was in with Rally. That draft finished like four rounds ago. Oh, nice. Because I wasn't trying to fumble my way talking through. Chip, of course, is going cold there. The young, the young guy. All right, so let's let's look at our teams here. Um, uh, just. See. I'm kind of surprised how uh, full the perfect game has gotten. I don't know if you've been monitoring I've been that. I've not been paying attention to it. Like, I would draft. Like, I like the structure. Um, like, I want to do more. 
Um, I'm just, I just hate sitting in lobbies. Not yeah. like my days are like always so, so busy. And like, I think I could pull it off on the phone, but um, I just hate sitting in the lobbies, but yeah, I'll, I'll do more if, if they're filling. Yeah. I don't, I did five pretty early uh, and I, I kind of regret it. I wish I had done those five throughout the whole period. Is there, oh, what's the max? I think max it's 10. 20. Or is it 20? I was thinking 10, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll get all the way there. I've only done a couple. Part of me is just maybe wanting to save some of that for in season. Sure. So maybe we're not going to review the team. It's tonight. probably not, which is good <laughs> because my team stinks. <laughs> you did take Kyle Bradish and Walker Bueller there at the end. Yeah. Yeah, my, my logic there, and this might be flawed, but like – April is the easiest month to get by injuries because in theory, your team is the healthiest your team will be um, for pitchers. It's probably false logic because like Cobb Radish could very well just not pitch the entire season. It's yeah. so, like, there's no guarantee that I get him back in May. Whereas, you know, like a large new bar, you're pretty sure you're going to get him back sometime in April or May. So like quit being like, I'm not so scared of injuries. I sh- you should be for pitchers, but like for hitters, like you know, the guys like the the Texas guys like Josh Young and um Corey Seager, like a couple picks at most for missing, you know, a week or two, unless you yeah. think it bleeds. Um you're gonna have six or seven hitters to replace them and it's really only two weeks out of twenty. So yeah. All right. Uh so that's awesome. Thank you for jumping on here, Eric. Um, Thanks for having uh, me. Yeah, if if you are interested in his rankings, uh, they're there at easydfs.xyz. Uh, what is the uh, price point there? You get the rankings. If, if, all you're, if all you want, if you're just an MLB guy, 10 bucks gets you the MLB, um, you know, constantly updated with ADPs and anything that changes for the next month. Um, early bird for the full year, like all my NFL stuff, everything I do, like I, I'm going to kind of regret this. So I'm not shouting it. Like that's 25 bucks. Um, that'll go up. Um, you know, but if you get in before the MLB season, you can get everything I do all year for 25. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and there will probably be no sheep seats next week. Um, as I, like I said, I'm going out of the country for a week and a half and I don't know how my internet situation is. Maybe we'll do something silly. I don't know. We'll see. I'll see how it goes uh, with my my work situation. Uh, yeah. But uh, we are going to head out here tonight. Uh, so for Easy and myself, uh, good luck drafting.